Kubor Nagashlem Jo Nongsan Hima. Hadian Kajing Sai So Commission Football Kabaningkong, Kasor Kajala Kalapin Bana Bashan Kan Sapli, Sai Commission Football Kabaar Hakani Kajala. Habaya Kran Bat Kinong Thok Kubor Umentri Rambak Kajala Ukan Rat Ki Sangma, Ulapin Bana Bakiladon Kumba Shispa Atli Ki Grassroot Center, Hakaling Ki District Kajala. Hendai menta ka genti ka sorkan kandang penmi khambun syu-syu ki grassroot center hakaleng ke jela. Kenang baki kena akin yuk yang kajing syah hikai ke bapaka haki coach ke jela. Badruk baki nang mi syibun ki kena ki bapau haka jing lekai football. Haka wipat kaliang ka sorkan kalau penkrek eru iki song jing harap nak benta ki klub ke jela. Balatip kum ki elit klub. Kabamut iki klub ki bala kiu kerdan syaka ai lik. Bat syaneng. Lembat ki klub ki bayi syim menta hapok ke jela. Kani kajing a jing harap kan long ar kelur nak sorkar lembat syiklur kebanuan nak sponsorship nak bentak ki klub i league bat shaneng kenang bakan long kajing kersian ke bakraw ki klub ki badan ha kejela the very outset uh, i would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank the armed forces uh, especially the indian army for having selected uh, shillong as one of the venues for the duran cup as you know, the Duran Cup is one of the oldest uh, tournaments in the country and one of the oldest tournaments in the world, in fact. And uh, Meghalaya, and especially Shillong being a very football-loving state, uh, it makes a lot of uh, sense for us to uh, be part of this tournament and to host it, and especially to have our own uh, teams also being part of the Duran Cup itself. Uh, I would like to congratulate the Honorable Minister of Sports and Youth Affairs and the entire Sports Department for having uh, successfully uh, completed this particular uh, stadium which is now hosting the tournament. As you can see that this is at the international standard and a lot of work has gone into making this stadium what it is uh, today. And uh, I also would like to congratulate him and the team for the successful uh, uh, opening ceremony that we're having today. And we look forward to the next uh, six matches that we will be, uh, next five more matches that we will be hosting here in Shillong. And we, of course, uh, urge the citizens of our state and especially of Shillong to come out in large numbers to participate and be part of this particular tournament and the matches that are there. Uh, apart from that, uh, I would just like to share with you also that uh, in the last many years, uh, the government of Meghalaya has been focusing a, a lot on uh, sports and on sports infrastructure. And just to give you an idea that uh, when we had uh, initially started uh, our tenure in MDA1, uh, we had roughly about 50 different infrastructures throughout the state, uh, plus minus. And as of today, we have about 275 new structures which are under construction or in progress in different parts of the state. So almost, uh, uh, you know, uh, three, four, five, uh, uh, five times, in fact, fold increase in the infrastructure, uh, numbers of uh, sports infrastructure that have come up in the state. Just to give you a monetary figure also, uh, on a rough average about 100 crores used to be spent uh, in uh, normally around uh, before 2018. But uh, if you put up all the projects that we are currently uh, uh, constructing and work is going on, we have almost close to 1000 crores worth of infrastructure projects that are going on in the state as we speak. Uh, and many, many more projects are expected to come up and we want to give it a big push. Apart from that, you are also aware that we have been supporting different uh, uh, associations and uh, we've been giving a lot of support to the uh, players and the athletes themselves in different disciplines. Uh, we've come out with different programs like the STAR program where we, uh, we look at um, uh, scientifically selecting candidates and uh, sports person based on the talent that uh, they naturally have. Uh, and it's a very scientific approach which is done in many parts of the world and we are one of the first few states to have adopted this scientific uh, process of actually selecting different uh, candidates and different sports person. Uh, apart from that, um, 
I would come back to football. I also would like to share with you that uh, uh, we are officially going to launch uh, the uh, football uh, mission two uh, in the state uh, very soon. Uh, you're aware that uh, we have approximately uh, about 100 plus minus uh, grassroots centers that are functioning under the grassroots, uh, the football uh, mission program at the grassroots level. Uh, we plan to expand that uh, much, much more aggressively in the future so that uh, more uh, uh, youngsters can get an opportunity to get trained, uh, get professional help and uh, professional support uh, at the rural level also. And uh, that we hope will then produce many, many more talented footballers and allow them to come into the mainstream uh, football uh, scenario at the national as well as hopefully the international level also. Uh, so that's the first most important thing I would like to share with you that uh, we need to support our different clubs at different levels and therefore uh, uh, we are going to start a special program where uh, under the government we are going to support different clubs in terms of financial uh, uh, support and we're starting with football and as we move along hopefully in other sports and disciplines also it will happen. Uh, so we have uh, two categories where we're going to support local clubs. Uh, the first one is what we call the elite clubs, which is the I League uh, and uh, uh, and above. Uh, those uh, uh, those clubs that make it to the I League and above, the government will support them with a grant of two crores and uh, an additional one crore uh, through sponsorship. So two plus three plus one. Uh, this is a fund that we are giving to uh, to support and to motivate clubs that uh, are doing well. So this fund will be given to uh, the clubs that are able to make it to the elite club, which is the I League uh, and above uh, tournaments that are there at the national level. So there are of course very few clubs right now in Meghalaya that make it. But we are hoping that with this incentive that we plan to give, which is two crores plus another one crore through sponsorship, two crores from the state government. We are hoping that this would be a motivation for other clubs to start uh, doing better and performing better in the future. The criteria and categories, we will work out more details. Apart from that, um, uh, you are also aware that uh, we are going to be hosting the Megala Games also very soon uh, in uh, Genthi Hills this time. So preparations for those games also have started and the uh, Honourable Minister has already started taking reviews of that. Uh, to see how, uh, what kind of infrastructure requirements will be there and uh, what are the steps to be taken. Uh, so that's also a very exciting uh, tournament and uh, games that we look forward to and this will be the first time that of course Genti Hills will be hosting the Meghalaya Games uh, in this year, means in this season basically, which is 2024-25. Uh, so these are the few um, updates that I had. Um, we thank our Honourable Chief Minister uh, for the support this all of this would have uh, not been possible. I would like to thank our entire team, the sports department for working tirelessly to make this uh, ground a success. Uh, just a few points that I would like to add is that uh, the government is uh, planning to set up a residential academy. Uh, which is a football residential academy of the Northeast United FC, which will be in Mokhanu. So, just that, I think the rest, uh, i CM has already mentioned, but uh, just that point. Will be one of its kind in the Northeast, uh, will be set up, and this is again being done to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, explore the talent at the grassroots level and give them the opportunity to train. Um, and the exposure and the opportunity to play at the national as well as international level. So that's all from our side. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, expenditures cannot be seen as an expenditure. We have to realize that this is an investment in our youth. Uh, when you invest in sports, you invest in the character of the youth. When you invest in sports, you invest in the discipline of the youth. You are shaping these youths to become better. Whether they win or lose, that's a different part. But uh, to be able to follow your passion, to be able to train, to be able to get discipline, 
in what you do and uh, to be able to get the opportunity. Uh, I think these are things you cannot uh, value or you cannot uh, quantify with uh, winning or losing or with the money that you spend as you said. So I won't look at it as expenditure. I look at it as investment in our youth. Uh, you know, and uh, teenage kids and of course senior kids also. Uh, they got a chance to be trained by uh, at least a professional coach. We've not been international level, but at least it's better than getting no coaching at all. So uh, like that, uh, a large number of uh, uh, sports enthusiasts and football enthusiasts and those who really wanted to you know, uh, get training under this. So these kind of centers were put up and uh, some infrastructures were put up. Uh, things happened. As I said, again, uh, in this kind of work that you do, this kind of investment you make, you can't quantify the results just by saying, well, so and so won the match and lost the match, this many goals were won, silver were won. It's, it's not like that. I keep repeating to all of you, uh, if you look at the government strategy, uh, we are really investing in our youth. I, I made it clear very, very many times to all of you that we look at uh, our stakeholder, which is the youth, as the center of what we're trying to do out here. And sports investment is one part of it. We realized that uh, the youth also are very keen on music. So there's a grassroots music program that's going on. We realized that people are a lot into uh, now social media. So if you realize we had come out with the social media uh, awards and we've come out with our OTT platform. Uh, the idea is really to energize the youth and to really make them productive and constructive and to shape the character uh, in a positive manner. And all these activities we do, as I said, you cannot quantify them by, say, the gold medals they win or the silver they win. It's ultimately the human beings that they become because of the investments that we make is actually the value uh, and the real satisfaction in what we're doing. So therefore, uh, uh, yes, grassroots, uh, the, sorry, the uh, football mission. Uh, one, we have a lot of things we did. Some things uh, may not have been uh, the way we, we thought it would. Uh, therefore, the mission two is going to now uh, improve on those aspects, uh, scale it up even more and try to have more centers everywhere and uh, maybe try to make it more professional in whatever way we can. The idea being to again link it up with uh, all these other activities that we're doing around us um, and ultimately as I said give a better opportunity to the experienced teams and their high ranking teams and therefore you can see that the competition is very very strong. Uh, my personal opinion I saw was that it's almost, uh, you know, neck to neck uh, the way the plane was going on. But we could definitely see that Lajong was, uh, had a slight edge in terms of their speed. They were much faster compared to the other side. Uh, but both were playing very well. So really I think the second half would be really, really interesting. Uh, but obviously we are for the home team and uh, the home team.